In today's video, I'm going to be jumping onto Photoshop to be sharing with you my secret on how I create this glass morphism effect in my photos just using Photoshop. And I'm going to start right now. Right guys, so the very first thing you want to do is go ahead and simply choose a photo. And if you'd like to follow along with the same photo that I'm using in this tutorial, make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. Okay, so firstly, what you want to do is to actually duplicate the background layer. We're actually gonna split this video into two sections. One is going to be actually creating the glass morphism, and the other one is going to be creating the actual glass itself, the pane of glass that we're gonna be adding to that photo. So firstly, let's go ahead and move on to step one. So what we're gonna do is take that background there, I'm gonna go ahead and press Command J on my keyboard, that will duplicate that layer. Then with that layer selected, we're gonna go ahead and right click on that layer and drop all the way down to Convert to Smart Object. Now the reason we're converting it into a smart object because it will allow us to change and adapt the intensity and the effect after the fact. So instead of it burning it into that layer, we'll be able to actually use smart filters, which will allow you to change the amount of blur and the intensity of that glass morphism effect. Okay, so once that is done, what we're gonna do is now actually apply the effect. So with that layer selected, go up to Filter, and now we're gonna drop down to Filter Gallery. Now inside Filter Gallery, what you wanna do is drop down to where you can see it says Distort, and we're gonna go ahead and select Glass in this example. Now in the drop down here, you wanna make sure Glass is selected because we're creating a glass morphism effect. With Distortion here, I'm gonna go ahead and select 12, Smoothness of three, Texture, I'd recommend choosing Frosted. It's got this nice kind of frosted glass effect, as you can see, and scale of 100%. So you should have glass selected in your filter gallery. And then all you need to do is simply go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, if we go ahead and zoom in, we've got this almost glass looking like effect, which is really nice. And as you can see, we've also applied it as a smart filter in your gallery. So we can actually turn it off and on inside our layers, which is super handy. We also need to add a blur effect to this as well. So again, with that layer selected, go up to filter, go down to blur, and the blur we're gonna be choosing is Gaussian blur. Now, completely up to you how much of a, how much intensity you want with your blur. I'm, I like adding between 20 to 30, that seems to work in most examples. But again, we can change this after the fact because we are using smart filters. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose 20 in this example. And I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Okay, so what we've done so far, is if I do before, this is our background layer, and then after, and this is going to be what we're applying that glass morphism effect. So we've actually created the effect, now we need to create the shape. Now it's completely up to you what shape you wanna create. I'm just gonna go for a square in this example, but you could go crazy and choose any shape you like. I also like sometimes with this example, you can actually apply it to half of the image, making it look like you've almost got this pane of glass in the photo. But today, I'm just gonna go for a simple square. So what we're gonna do is turn that layer off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the left-hand side and we're just simply gonna go ahead and choose my rectangle tool. I'm gonna go ahead and just create a simple rectangle in the center of my image. It doesn't matter what color it is, it makes no difference whatsoever. So actually I'm gonna go ahead and free transform it and move it directly into the center of my image. And press enter on your keyboard to confirm. So we've just ended up with a nice shape. Okay, so now we need to make it look like glass and we can do that by applying a few layer styles to this. So. With our rectangle selected, we're gonna double click on that layer, bringing up our layer stylizing box. So the first thing we wanna do is to go to our bevel and emboss. So in here, with our structure, we wanna make sure we're selecting an inner bevel, so it's affecting the inside of our shape, not the outside, and we want the technique to be smooth. Now the depth here, I like choosing 100%. We're gonna choose direction up and size, again, depending on the pixel density of your image, I find around about 10 pixels seem to work quite nicely, and soften, I like choosing 0%. I also like making sure use global light is selected, and in this example, I'm actually choosing 30 degrees with an attitude of also 30 degrees. And then in our highlight and shadow mode, I like choosing blending mode of screen for my highlights, shadow of multiply, and then with opacity here, I like choosing 75% in my highlight mode, and then 50% in the shadows, as you can see there. Next, what we wanna do is actually go all the way down to Inner Glow. In our Inner Glow, we wanna make sure we've chosen Overlay as our blending mode with opacity of 70%. We also wanna make sure we're choosing a gradient. So I like choosing a white to white gradient, so white of color. And then on the top here, we've got opacity of 100% 
and then over on the right hand side, opacity of 0%. So it goes from white to white and the opacity slowly drops, adding a nice soft inner glow effect. So with that selected, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Then with the technique, I'm gonna choose softener. We want it to affect the edge of our glass and we're gonna choose choke of 20%. And the last thing, or second to last thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna go down to gradient overlay. This is gonna add that kind of shimmery glass effect. So it looks like it's almost reflecting off of something. So to do this, all you'll need to do is choose gradient. Again, we're gonna go for the same gradient we chose previously. So we're gonna go for white to white, zero, or uh, white to white, and then 100% opacity to 0% opacity. And again, click OK. This time, we're gonna go for opacity of 25%. We're gonna choose linear, so it affects from one side to the other. And then the angle here, I'm gonna choose the opposite of our light. So we're gonna choose on the bright side, and that is a 145%, and then scale of 100. And the last thing we'll do to separate it from the foreground and background is to actually use a drop shadow. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and select our drop shadow here. Again, making sure global light is selected because then it will create in the inverse. So if the light's coming from the right hand side, we want the shadow falling on the left hand side. So what we're gonna do is choose global light and an angle of 30 degrees. So that'll be the exact opposite as our highlight on our glass. Now with this, I like choosing multiply as my blending mode, making sure we've got black as our foreground color. And then the opacity here, we can change that. I like increasing it a little bit, so I might go for 65% in this example because it's quite a dark background we can see. We've got distance here of 60 pixels and then the size of that blur is going to be 200 pixels there. But again, we can change that after the fact if we want to. And that's all we will need to do. As you can see, this is the little example we can see in our little thumbnail here. So we've got nice bright on one side, dark on the other, and it looks like a pane of glass. And all you need to do is go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, Pane of glass is looking really nice, but what we need to do now is to actually apply our blur effect, which you can see is on this layer, to our glass layer. And all we need to do is simply use a clipping mask. So with that, what we need to do is move our blur layer above our shape layer, then go to your blur layer here, right click, and then simply go all the way down to create clipping mask. And as you can see, it's created that really cool effect. Now, the reason we've actually used a clipping mask instead of a layer mask is because you can actually move it around and depending on what shape, you can actually apply it to a brand new shape as well if that's something you're wanting to do. So for example, what we can actually do is go to that rectangle there, press Command T or free transform, and we can actually move that around freely as long as the background and foreground hasn't changed. So we can move it over to the right, for example, that looks really, really cool. Or what you can actually do, my favorite example is to actually place it in the middle and then actually change that shape and make it so it covers one half of the image. So I'm gonna go for something like so. And if I go ahead and recenter it, you can see the glass looks like it's affecting one half of the image. And now you can actually apply text to that half, which is really, really cool. And as you can see, all we've done actually is just added in two separate layers. We've added in our glass effect layer and then our blur layer. And don't forget, if you're finding it's too strong, you, because we've used smart filters, we can go into that Gaussian blur and then we can actually drop that down. So I might drop that down to around about 10 pixels in this example. And there we go. What I can do now is quickly show you the before and the after. And text looks a lot more legible. Here is text without using a glass morphism effect. And here is with using a glass morphism effect. It really separates the foreground and background and makes text look a lot more legible. And there we go. That is how you can create this awesome glass morphism effect in your photos just using Photoshop. And I've got to admit, this is a great way to really separate your foreground and background, especially adding in any text elements to your photo. It really adds legibility and it works really well if you're applying it to UI, UX design, maybe for an app even works on websites and even game design. So go give it a go and make sure if this video helped you out, go ahead and like, comment and subscribe. I've been James for Photo Fever and I'll catch you guys next time.